So normally the second day of the retreat, you know, after we've gone through all the fundamentals um, in the curriculum, and the, the second day is really a, a little bit of a workshop. And one of the main activities that we do, you know, once we've been educated is, all right, like alternate investments, they all sound great. What do we do next? Or more specifically, where are we going to get the money from first or what which of our money makes the sense the most sense to deploy first so i call this kind of the deployment plan creation and what i would suggest is creating a you know really si simple chart outlining this year next year maybe a few years ahead on one side of your chart and the others would be the sources of investable capital Generally, this is how I recommend you go down this, this, what is the priority to invest first? Kind of the side note, sometimes we'll call this the low return on equity witch hunt game, where essentially the procedure is to first invest the funds that's making the least amount of money. So typically first for most people, that is the, the net savings that they have every year. Just as a side note, most of our investors are saving anywhere from $50,000 to over $100,000 a year, which is, is great. And it's going to certainly get you to where you want to be in you know, under a decade. That's the money that you want to deploy into real estate deals, ideally running through your AIB accredited investor banking first. The reason being is you know, that money isn't doing anything. It's not, it's just losing value to inflation by just sitting there in your savings account or your money market account. So that's what you want to deploy first. As a side note there, you know, there is some cash savings that people want to have as this is known as the emergency savings account. You know, what we find, especially for non-business owners um, who have a higher need for cash reserves, most people working day jobs as a professional really have no need for more than twenty to $30,000 um, in their bank account. Of course, when you create your accredited and investor banking system, that's the ideal place to store that cash while you're making a great tax-free return there, by the way. But I think most investors get to this point, right? They have a whole bunch of money in a few places, the first being lazy debt equity in their home equity. And this is really the first place we go at because the theory is this money is just locked up in your house and between that, your qualified retirement plan money, such as your 401ks, IRAs, you know, that stuff is at least making something in the stock market. We may or may not like it, right, as traditional investments, but it's doing something. And then, of course, some other people may have some other IRAs or non-retirement fund investments. Again, for the same idea, it is also making the same type of money there. As far as we're concerned. The majority of people will and should elect to deploy their home equity in their primary residence first. You can get access to this capital in three ways, and this is the order that we would recommend it. First, try to get a home equity line of credit, a HELOC, then get a refinance on your property where you pull cash out. The third, it may make sense to just sell the asset and for potentially rent that may be pretty drastic but of course i think this is what ultimately we, when people have their onboarding call these are some of the topics that we'll discuss because again you know we're getting into this this uh, world of, this is very personal in terms of personal finance and it's really difficult to outline in the book format such as this which is you know why we extend that invitation to uh, join our community and get that free onboarding call to really discuss this based on your own personal situation. But going back to the options to getting equity out of your home equity, first, there's your HELOC. The nice thing about the HELOC is that you don't really have to pay fees, you don't pay interest on money that you're not drawing out. It's simple interest. 
the bad thing is that you don't get access to all the equity that's in your house. But it's a great, the reason why it's the first line here, the first option is that it gets people going, right? Most people can get a HELOC going within a few weeks, get access to the cash and get going and start investing. Most investors, as we mentioned earlier, don't deploy a huge majority of their net worth right away, let alone the first year. So the HELOC can get them down the road and kind of just get them going, get you going. At some point, you're going to take the HELOC as far as it can go. At that point, the refinance is really the, the way to access more of that equity in that house. The trouble is with the cash out refinance is it is there are some fees associated with it. And even if your mortgage lender is going to give you a quote unquote zero fee loan, essentially what they're doing is just increasing the interest rate on you there. How when you buy points is essentially how that works. So be aware of that little tricky maneuver by the broker. But it makes sense, right? If you have a whole bunch of equity in the house to get access. Of course, the third one is to sell the house. You know, I've rented for pretty much most of my adult life. And one of my general rules of thumb is you don't buy a primary residence until your net worth is two to three times greater than that of that house. So if you're buying a million dollar house, I probably wouldn't feel comfortable telling my kids to buy that house until their net worth is two to three million dollars. Why? Because homes are generally not a great investment in comparison to having your money working in value add commercial institutional type of investments. And I think this, maybe I said it before, but this is where there's a clash between what most people are taught. Most people are not very good with their money. They spend more than they make. Therefore, for them to buy a house is a great save for savings plan. Think about it. They have to pay the mortgage every month and pay it first before they go spend their money on other things that they don't may or may not have control over. Whereas, you know, if you're reading this book, you're typically on the other side of this paradigm and therefore buying your house to live in prior to a sort of critical mass point, maybe getting onto the floor first or two on the wealth elevator doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but again, this is very personal to your own personal situation. This is what we talk about on these calls. The next thing would be taking money out of your qualified retirement plan, which is just a catch-all for 401ks, 403bs, TSPs, IRAs, Roth IRAs. Now, the problem there, and this gets a little bit more complicated because a lot of investors have very significant sums of money in here. And we've discussed this in the IRA section. We've discussed this in the the retirement fund section and some of the, the myths about that. But there are some con tax consequences for taking out your qualified retirement plan money where depending on where your adjusted gross income, it may not make sense for you to do it. So again, very personal to your personal situation. More than happy to take a look at this for you guys there. But that's the quick, that action plan, right? It gives you a deployment of what to do in your first year, second, third year, and beyond. And then where are you getting the funds from? Whether you expedite this plan quicker or maybe you're a little bit slower, this is the critical path where you're going to get access to funds and redeploy it from traditional investments to alternate investments to implement all of the strategies that we discussed today in the Wealth Elevator.